So I'm fairly certain that the third installment of the Prophecy franchise starts with Jennifer Beals' character and her son from the last movie being set on fire and killed. Sequels! Then we see old man Gabriel driving a car. Wow! He then silently watches a street preacher get murdered by Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif is in this! Hell yeah! Although I'll go ahead and tell you now that he only gets one brief speaking scene and is dead before the second act. Boo. Coroner Guy is also back. He's the one who pieces together that the dead street preacher was Jennifer Beals' son. So I guess he survived the firebombing whatever that was happening in the opening scene. Except that now he's dead. Except he's not, because he's a half angel. With Gabriel being a lowly human now, there's another big bad, played by Vincent Spano of, uh, and God created woman fame. Look, I watched Rebecca de Mornay be naked in that movie a lot when I was a teenager, so yeah, that's what I know the dude from. He and Gabriel obviously know each other, and Gabriel gets taunted a bit for being a person now. As you do. Come back to us. We can retake what's rightfully ours. We can make it like it was before the monkeys. Remember? Or has this place completely befouled your senses? I like it here. And I even learned to drive. But the point is basically that if you thought Gabriel was bad, look out for this new guy. And also, this might lead to a face turn for Gabriel, new perspective and all. Coroner Guy is now in charge of doing all the research on our new characters because the leads of the first two films are dead, and he's all that's left. It really seems like he's being set up to either become the new lead of the franchise or to be the next one to get unceremoniously murdered, but instead we get neither? The movie just kind of wanders away from him. He does stick around long enough to give his research to Half Angel's girlfriend, and it's a bunch of stuff about the Angel of Genocide becoming a second god or the next god or something. It's hard to decipher all this angel claptrap, and not helping matters much is that our lead actress here is giving, well, a bad performance. Sorry? How am I supposed to take that, huh? Probably the same way I have for a very long time. Badly. I just lost the only thing I cared about in this whole fucked up universe. You haven't seen badly, sir. Not yet. Walken being on the other side of things in this one is interesting and probably what intrigued him enough to come back and do a third one of these, but it's also not what you want. Continuity, sure, but come on, give me evil Gabriel, not this weird hobo who wanders in and out of scenes. He's trying to have fun with what he's given, but he's barely a factor. An attempt has been made to make the various angel stuff seem a little cooler, although it does come across as, hey, we saw big trouble in Little China. The angels do start licking eyeballs, though, as a way to track people, so one step forward, two steps back. Then there's this stunt that makes me want to curl up into a ball. The movie does try to stoke the nostalgia fire for the franchise, which is silly since there's only been five years between the release of the first and third films. Half Angel Guy runs into Mary, the little girl from the first film, out in the desert. She's all grown up, and Gabriel asks for directions from the same waitress in the same diner as the first prophecy. So, there are some things here for fans of the franchise, if such people actually exist. Say, ma'am, I wonder if you could tell me how to get to Gila Flats. Then it kind of turns into Mortal Kombat at the end for a bit, and then we see Walken's farewell to the franchise, which just... What? 